Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you exactly how PewDiePie will save Magic the Gathering from what it has become, which is a, I'll call it a mildly progressive movement. Um, I would actually even call it a social movement. So this card game, um, there's many ways to make a point, make a political point. Um, you can go to a rally, you can play some Magic the Gathering even to make your political points. But Magic the Gathering has has always been in my mind somewhere, a place where anywhere you can go. It revolves around a local game store, of course, which Wizard Coast is now trying to get rid of. But it could be a MTG Arena situation as well, where you log in and you play someone and you don't care if they're a man, a woman, white, black, Asian, purple, blue, sparkly, rainbow, green, orange... What are the colors am I missing? I don't want to uh, miss any co colors because then somebody will uh, say I'm not inclusive enough. But Magic used to be a place where you grab a game with someone you don't know and then you can become friends with them. You can talk Magic. And even if you're not real life friends, which I don't have that many real life friends who play Magic, you are at least Magic friends. And you can go to the FNM, you can text each other, you can go to GPs. I remember when I first got here, we went to, I think, a Star City Con in Dallas, and it was just with a bunch of random dudes, and I didn't know any of them, and I had a blast, and we all became magic friends later. So the reason PewDiePie is so important for the evolution of magic is he's going to bring us back to the center um, by the demographics. Um, Unsleeved Media, as we know, the quartering which he now calls himself, has been banned for life. So he's not coming back anytime soon. And I would argue that had he been the quarterling when they banned him, they probably wouldn't have banned him for life. Uh, they do look at the size of the channel so that they treat the mana source differently than they treat me because he's a bigger channel. He gets mythic previews, uh, which he lazily puts together in a tweet, and I don't. Um, now, when you talk about the haves and have-nots in the Magic community, for a very long time, people who were the center or to the right a little bit or to the right a lot were being discriminated by the Magic community because every all of their employees are very woke individuals. Uh, I guess I'm going to use the term woke because there's other terms I can use, but that might be more offensive to them. So these very woke people have decided that um, by accepting everyone, we have to ex exclude the majority demographic, which is white males. As I've, I mentioned, I am not a white male, but I assume that the majority of Magic players, by a large margin, are white males. Now, this has created a very interesting system, which PewDiePie will counteract. And this system, I believe, is the most toxic part of our community. It's uh, white males who actively attack other white males. And it's very strange, right? So AJ, let's take uh, AJ. Um, I, I made a whole video about AJ. Um, AJ is that dude who is a super feminist, um, who is, you know, his tweets are incredibly feminist, pro-feminist. And you couldn't find a more feminist white male than AJ. Um, and that's just the honest truth. Um, you read some of his, his tweets and it's like, man, this is, even a feminist would maybe consider his tweets extreme, extremely pro-feminist. And then it turns out that his girlfriend for a long time uh, claims that he abused her emotionally all the time and has at least committed one count of, again, this is what she claims, of physical abuse. Um, and yeah, that's really weird, right? Like, what? So you're telling me the number one feminist Magic the Gathering player who's a white male, who's more extreme than many other feminists who are females, is actually a emotional slash domestic abuser? Like... What? What happened here? Like, what, what happened here? He didn't deny it. Oh, well, he did deny it, but it came off as 
very, very sad because it turned out uh, later it was found out that he uh, was being that this whole household was being supported by the female, the person being emotionally and potentially physically abused, and he didn't make any income, and she paid for his meals, his travel, his. I mean, what does it really get that much sadder? Like, like I, I don't get it, but hey, that's where we are. And the people who hate hate Pepe the Frog and on the quarterling the most actually <laughs> look like the quarterling. Like, okay, let's take the Manosaurus and the quartering. Uh, they're both white males. Um, they both kind of look like the same. Uh, I know I'm, the quartering is going to slaughter me, but he doesn't play magic anyway. He won't watch this video. So they both look like, kind of like in my opinion, they look, the quartering looks obviously more manly and he has a beard, but they kind of look like magic players in my opinion. Now, of course, we know the Manosaurus is not a magic player from his poor, poor performance at the Community Cup, which he begged and pleaded for us to vote him in only to lose to a janitor who was going to lose his job unless he uh, lost to the Manosaurus, and he can never do that. Uh, the Manosaurus can never win against that guy. So when we talk about um, this thing, um, PewDiePie is going to move everyone back to the center where we can all have fun together and it doesn't matter who you play on MTG Arena. You could even play PewDiePie and have a good time. His decks look really fun. Uh, he's not playing Nexus of Fate, which has been banned now for not fun. And it seems like you could have a good time with PewDiePie playing Magic. Um, I would say that is not true for some of these, quote, uh, celebrities in Magic the Gathering who are being paid. So again, there's two types of people. There's one type of person who plays Magic because they enjoy it. They spend their own hard-earned money to play Magic. And that's PewDiePie. Uh, PewDiePie to my knowledge, is not sponsored. I know he's not sponsored because look at the title of his videos and title of his deck. And he's playing and grinding to Mythic. So he's played many, many games. So it's not like he just played one game and then, or it's not like he's made a deck tech on a, uh, on a deck he doesn't own. Every MTG content creator ever. Uh, he understands how his decks work. He understands what cards he has to play in sequence. He understands his mana curve. Uh, he understands interactions with other decks because he plays the deck. You don't get to Mythic unless you actually grind out the game. You can make a net deck without playing a single game of Magic. Do you know that? You don't need to own a single card of Magic to make a net deck. On You make a YouTube video about the winning net deck at AGP. Or now it's called Magic Fest. Uh, MF. Let's just call Magic Fe Fest MF. I'm sure that's going to really offend the Hasbro company. So you, you have a situation where I think a lot of times um, people um, attack other people who are the same as them. And the, answer, the question is, why would you do that? And then people support other people who are very different from them because they want to be uh, enlightened or woke. Again, I'm going to use the term woke, but you can replace it with many other terms. Um, these woke individuals are so woke that uh, they are willing to sacrifice their own demographics to aid. I, I don't really know how to even explain it. But it's a very crazy concept when you think about it. And that's what's happening in Magic the Gathering. And this is exactly what PewDiePie will end. He will end this wokeness, which is... I mean, you go on Reddit, and the number one post is, PewDiePie sucks. I hate Pe Pe PewDiePie. PewDiePie. And then you go to MTG Arena, it's the same post. And you, you wonder why these people are posting about this. For a guy they don't, they've never met. They may not even have watched his video. They don't even know he played Magic until recently. And why are they so offended by him uh, to the point of making these ridiculous comments and statements, which they don't have any support for. And it comes down to they want likes. They want Twitter likes. They want Reddit upvotes. And that's what I think being woke means. It's just a very easy way to generate attention and likes and upvotes and on Reddit and Twitter. 
So some of the most crazy things have come from Twitter. Um, and I, I look at it and I say to myself, my gosh, like, who's saying this? Like, you know, uh, one of the clear examples is when someone who's woke will make an argument, let's say, oh, I, um, I hate people who, you know, discriminate against pit bulls and they're always wrong and never and, and ever. And that would be the mana source, by the way. And it's like, who said that? Do we have like an actual source or is this like a vague statement that you heard on, you know, wh where do you hear this from? And then suddenly their wokeness generates all these likes and retweets and all these hearts. Like, you know, the same with the, uh, the meme uh, on the magic for bad. And they all got banned because of a meme, uh, which is, you know, it's like, why did people, why, why did Emma tweet the meme? Why do we have such a big, you know, blah, blah, blah. I think it was just because we need, they needed to get likes. You know, like, I honestly would love for a female Magic player to be popular, to be very popular, to be more popular than Tolarian Community College. I would love for that to happen. Um, but should we destroy every, so would you like everyone quit the game and then finally, and then, oh, great, we, the female Magic player won and we all quit. And now, no, I mean, every, I don't care if you're a woman, a man, you, what your sexual preference is. I don't care if you're blue, purple, green. There's nothing better than being on a fair playing field and having everything be fair. And magic is fair. Magic content creating, however, is not fair. Like, I'll get this question a lot. Why do I have more subscribers in a small channel that works its ass off when I just make these PewDiePie videos all the time? I don't know. Is because magic content creation is not fair. But if I played you in a game of magic, you have every opportunity to win as I do. You can play the exact same deck as I do, even as I have. So when you talk about Magic the Gathering, the game, the game itself is very fair because anyone can win. When you log on to MTG Arena, it doesn't matter if you're PewDiePie, it doesn't matter if you're Tolarian, it doesn't matter if you're the mana source. MTG Arena, there's no buys. And that's one of the reasons I feel like is pretty ridiculous that magic pros get buys they get automatic wins so yes they do better because you gave them free wins right like do people not see this connection and yes do they, they do better because they cheat so they don't have to deal with variants because they get exactly what they want all the time the whole wokeness of our community is surprisingly um I don't know. It, it just seems like illogical. Like I'm trying to think of like a way why we have it. I know why we have it. We have it for the Twitter likes and the Reddit upvotes. But I don't understand why the people who are doing it think it's advantageous for everybody. Uh, I'm not here to say that I believe PewDiePie is perfect. But I do know PewDiePie is a magic player. I cannot say that about the Mana Source. I cannot say that about Tolarian Community College. I really try to watch these videos, and they were either created to be so basic, I guess if that's what the subscriber base wants, but then it's like, man, like, man, like, um, I, I remember Dariums. Now he does Pokemon, and he's really real. And there's certain things that he didn't like about the community, and there's certain things he liked about the community, and he was real. He was going to have a magic convention where we all get together and go to uh, his store in Ohio, I believe. And you know who was not, who was the main instigator who prevented people from coming and building this community? Uh, we had a YouTube group, uh, we had a Facebook group where we're supposed to collab. No one collabed with anyone else because they're all selfish human beings. And that's what Magic the Gathering is not. But when you're a content creator, you live in this area where you do have clicks. Um, I'm sure that you understand there are clicks between the Mana Source and Tolarian. And some people are left out of these clicks, no matter how hard they try. I'm sure you also understand that when you have PewDiePie, he doesn't need a click. He doesn't need acceptance from Tolarian. He doesn't need acceptance from the Mana Source. He's not hoping for a shout out of any type. 
Um, that brings me to Alpha Investments. Um, his recent videos are interesting because Wizard of the Coast is actually stepping into his subscription model, but will probably do it better than he's doing right now in terms of value. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. But PewDiePie, the ultimate equalizer, I cannot wait for his nine-year year army, which is now probably 15, to play MTG Arena, to troll the crap out of everybody to meme stuff to follow along the footsteps of what i grew up with magic as um, there will always be equilibrium um, equilibrium it happens uh, magic was a very nerdy event and then became more popular and then became geek chic and now it becomes mainstream where people just do stuff for wokeness and now everyone's so woke that <laughs> you know, everyone. Trust me, everyone in magic community is awake now, from the uh, uh, the uh, amount, sheer amount of wokeness that's happening, and we can invite. So, thirty two top players are basically top players, and all of them are male. They're the pros being paid seventy five thousand dollars a year, and then we have thirty two mythic invitations where we can invite whoever we want. I want you to Google right now and point at how many of those mythic invitations are female magic players you have never heard of. And how many of them are not Jeff Hoogland or Caleb until recently. So basically they said that uh, MTG Mayfer, who streamed 33 hours of MTG Arena, is more important to the community than Caleb or Jeff Hoogland. Like, based on what metrics? Based on hours played, based on viewership, based on sponsorship, based on dedication, based on years played, based on community building, based on subscriber numbers, based on what? What, base, what basis would that be made except for diversity? That is the only basis where I would say, okay, for diversity. But when your 32 invitations are all the same, then it's, is it actually diverse? Or did you just decide that you wanted to exclude a certain type of person, a certain type of Jeff-like person? Now, I'm not a fan of Jeff's, but I do guarantee you that there are a lot of people who were invited to do $1 million Mythic Invitation where Jeff has spent more time, he's dedicated more effort, and just because Magic employees like Athena think that he's salty, Magic players are salty. I don't understand what's going on. Magic players like memes. Have you seen League of Legends Reddit? It looks nothing like the Magic Gathering Reddit. Where everyone's posting altars and ponies and unicorns and rainbows and shuns. Like, come on. Part of being part of a community is the funny memes. Is the funny... Like, we can't even have memes. Otherwise, we'll be banned. You can't even join a group for memes. Otherwise, we'll be banned. PewDiePie is the ultimate meme master. And I would love for them to stop his memes because there's, I mean, they're not going to be able to. So uh, PewDiePie will help us encourage more memes, more funny memes that are not meant to be offensive, but some people will change it into being offensive. I'm sure that these people like Emma, Frank, AJ, Efro, Athena, Maria... Auto Maria, Mayfer, these people are ready to jump on anything that PewDiePie says. Any little um, transgression that he has, they'll be on the bandwagon to, they'll, they'll ask to ban him for being offensive. But when he can bring a majority, and he is 400, 5,000 times the size of your following, like, What's Mayfair's following? A thousand? No, ten thousand maybe at most. When he has eighty-five million, what are you gonna fight about? I mean, he will get more likes and tweets and Reddit upvotes and you know <laughs> if if you want to decide if you're so objective is to get as many likes on your tweet as possible, then you do align yourself with PewDiePie and you do not align yourself with these woke individuals. So anyway, uh, speaking of wake wakiness, um, I would love you guys to subscribe to my other channel so I can get over 10,000 and then I will enter and I will be accepted because I was accepted before. I just have to like go there 
uh, to the social media day in Houston, which then I will record for you guys, where I will talk about real social media versus fake social media, fake followers, fake profiles, fake whatever. And then I will finally be on the top 100 social media list in Houston, which is where I belonged all along. Bye.